In this video series, we started with Reddit. We came up with different ideas that we could write books about based on what people have commented about. And then we had this button that when we clicked it, we started writing the book. And what that actually meant is that upon clicking that button, we got the chapter names created. So I got 10 chapters right here. And for each of those chapters, we got the chapter outlines created as well. So we have 1.1 up until 1.12, 7.1 up until 7.10, and so on and so forth. In the previous video, we then went one step further and we created each chapter for the book. So if I look here, under chapter details, I have a bunch of text that is the meat and bones, meat and potatoes of the chapter, and so on and so forth for each of the different chapters. In this video, what I'm going to show you is how to take these chapter details and format them into a format like so, where we have HTML that can be easily seen in something like an HTML viewer, and that looks good. So it's not just one large string of text that doesn't make sense, but instead it's formatted with the headings, with the line breaks, and so on and so forth. So then it would be easier for us to go from this stage into the actual creation of the PDF of the Google document that is the final kind of draft of the book. So that is what I'm going to show you in this chapter, how to go from this column into this column. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with a trigger. So I'm going to trigger this manually and I'm going to read from my air table because obviously I need to get the data from there. So let's go here at air table and I'm going to search for records. So in this case, I'm going to search for my list, which is called NA10 YouTube or book YouTube. And the list is going to be the one I'm working with. If this were to start from a trigger, this would be something that you would pass from that webhook type of trigger. In this case, I'm also going to use the formula done equals one, because over here, what I want is, if I just delete this stuff here, what I want is that I'm only going to grab the information which has this done ticked. Once we get this filled in, we'll just untick there. So there is that. Let me test this and we should get 10 items, which we do right there. Now, the next thing we need to do is essentially loop over the items. We want to grab the first chapter. In this case, I'm also going to sort based on the chapter name. So we'll just be able to grab the first chapter and let's loop over the items. Bet size is one, which is great. So we have one loop item there, which is called this chapter one. Now let's create or make some space here. We can delete this and let's start with the loop over items, items that need to happen. The first thing I'm going to do is use this set to turn the chapter details here into an array because it will make it easier to just deal with the stuff we need to do. So let's test this step. And here for some reason we're getting this error. So let's see. So it's saying no fields item exists but they're empty. How is that empty? If we just passed in one thing. Uh, okay, that's weird. Let's test this again. So we're getting one item. Okay. Okay. We're passing the chapter detail. Huh. That's very weird. Loop. Okay. Fixed. That. Right. This again. So let's loop over item. Bet size is one. Okay. Let's add a set. And yeah, there is information here. So let's put it in chapter detail and convert it into an array. And that seems to have worked now. Okay. So this is the first thing. Now, from this array, what we might want to do is split this out into a bunch of items. So here are zero, one, two. So let's just split this out into different items and let's put in chapter detail there and here we have 12 items so that's looking good so essentially we have the sub chapters right here so sub chapter one two three etc 
Now, the next thing we want to do after we split this out is to essentially um, convert this into a string because it will make it easier for us to, to work with. I'm not sure if this is necessary, to be honest, but I found this to be very helpful when I was doing all this stuff. So let's do that and let's split that into a string. Okay, so we get the 12 items. The next thing we're going to do is convert this into markdown. Let's go markdown. And let's just convert this into markdown. So I'm going to go to markdown to HTML. I'm going to pass along this information here. And the destination key can be data. So let's, let's leave this as data. As you see here, we get two items. We get the chapter details and we get the data, which we set right here. So here we get the H2, which looks good. We get the paragraphs and we get the ending paragraph right there. If I go to HTML viewer, there are some things we need to change, like these additional backslash ends, but that looks good overall. So the next thing is we need to combine everything together because here we're getting 12 items, right? And before we go to our table, we would want to combine these things together. So let's use the aggregate and let's just combine the data field right here. So this should give us all that in one. So we get one output item. And the issue I was having was that when I was trying to save this into our table, I was getting an error, presumably because this isn't exactly a string. And I guess Airtable requires a string. So here, what I did, I used a set. I just passed that data and uh, I just turned that into a string. So let's test this. Great. And now if we go to Airtable and we're going to update the record, which essentially is just going to be the same list as before. So the NA10 book YouTube, the list is going to be the same one as before. I just want to map that to the chapter name, which is going to be the loop over items uh, field. So let me find that. That's that. And here I'm going to do is delete that, delete that. I'm going to switch this to false because now we want to change this to unticked and for the formatted text it is going to pass along the data so the json.data from there and if i test the step as you can see that's created the h2 right here now there are some things that i don't necessarily like so first of all there's that, which I don't like. There's that, which I don't like as well. And I think even with quotes, uh, I mean, this we can remove. Let's see if there were any quotes, which might be uh, like big and enormous. So here we need to remove these backslashes as well. So we need to do some modifications plus remove this right there. So. Let's go back to the top here. So I believe if we go here and then we just do the formatting here, this would be good for what we're looking for. So let's replace all, first of all. Um, so where we have this, I'm not sure if we can just do it directly like so, but let's try that. So let's replace all instances of that with a backslash so invalid because I have a missing code there right dot replace all what's wrong with that um mm, so I think we need to do it double yep OK, 
Okay, let's test that first. I think that that should work. Let's see where there was big, big, and enormous. So yeah, that looks good. So that's the first thing. We need to remove this in the beginning. So let's replace that with an empty string. We also need to replace that at the end. So copy that. Can copy this as well. And just change that right there. So that should remove the ending two characters. And then there was, I think, the backslash n. Yeah, presumably. Let's see. Yeah, I think these backslash ends we need to remove. So I think if we do dot replace all and just copy that. He should be able to remove that as well. Okay, sweet. Let's test this out. Let's test workflow. Okay, and this is keep like it keeps going, obviously, because we have multiple ones. But let's just have a look here. So here I need to notice that we don't have a subheading, which is okay. I mean, this is part of. It's not a problem with this specific module is just what we got before and we just copy this and if we go to something like html viewer here we are almost good to go apart from these between each sub chapter so we just need to remove those from our flow so if we go back here and go back there let's just replace all of those so copy paste and now, instead of that, we just need to, yep, I think I should do it. So let's delete this. Let's go back here. And let's just test the workflow. Okay, let's stop it and see what we get. So here we get the formatted text. Let's copy this, go back to our HTML viewer. And this looks good to go. Yeah, I mean, now I'm noticing like, noticing like some paragraphs are quite long. So this could be something that we go back to when we are like reviewing the different steps, perhaps the earlier steps where we're creating the book chapters, but it's not a problem that is happening with this specific module because this seems to be working quite well. All right, so let's just delete this. Let's run the whole thing from start to finish. So let's go back here. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hit test workflow and this should pass. Cool. Okay, what I didn't do here is just I need to ensure that these are all ticked. Can delete those and now if I go back here, I can test the workflow and we should get all 10 items being passed through. And this is formatting all of those from start to finish. So starting these here and then removing the done tick. So yeah, that seems to be all that was needed right here. So now I get this formatted text and all we need to do in the final video of this series is to actually grab that information and create a Google document with that. And the thing is that with creating HTML documents, NA10 seems to be, or seems to struggle. So in order to do that, I'm going to introduce or go back to a tool that I generally love using in order to make the whole process seamless. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss future ones. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.